Welcome to the Fiber Cell Systems mini webinar, Hollow Fiber Infection Model for Antibiotic PKPD. I'm John Cadwell. The Hollow Fiber Infection Model was initially developed to evaluate antiviral medications for treating HIV. With funding from antibioterrorism agencies, the model was further developed for antibiotic testing. It is a powerful tool for optimizing dosage profiles, evaluating combination therapies, and defining emerging resistance. I believe the hollow fiber infection model will also regain importance in antiviral testing in the future. Emerging antibiotic resistance is a major health concern worldwide. Two million people in the U.S. have been infected with antibiotic bacteria last year. 23,000 people died as a result. Most of these deaths related to antibiotic resistance occur in hospitals and nursing homes. There are several reasons for a lack of new antibiotics. Only two systemic antibiotic agents have been approved since the year 2008. From a scientific standpoint, easy to discover antibiotics have already been found. Antibiotics represent a poor return on investment. So they're taken for a short period of time and new antibiotics will be reserved as a secondary line of treatment. The FDA process has become increasingly complex and expensive and it's not cost effective to get new antibiotics approved. Antibiotic evaluation Principles and protocols remain fundamentally unchanged. The minimum inhibitory concentration, or the MIC, is a cornerstone of defining antibiotic activity and efficacy. This is the lowest concentration of a drug that prevents a bacterial inoculum from growing to visibly detectable levels. We have the time the drug concentration remains above the MIC. However, the MIC tells us nothing about whether the antibiotic is bacteriostatic, bactericidal, or it's time or dosage dependent, the rate of bacterial killing, the post-antibiotic effect, and dosing profiles that either prevent or facilitate resistance. We know that antibiotic efficacy is tied to both concentration and time. So here we can just try to pretend that the area underneath the curve for these two antibiotics is the same, but the amount of time spent above the minimal inhibitory concentration is very different for these two compounds. To properly evaluate antibiotic pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, it is necessary to utilize assays which take into account the variables of both time and concentration. So these would be the time kill assay, the mouse thigh infection model, and the hollow fiber infection model. The time kill assay, also called a one compartment model, is where we have basically an open beaker that contains our broth and bacteria. We can add diluent and we have a waste reservoir so we can model dosage profiles over time. However, it is an open system, it's not biosafe. Bacterial numbers will change over time. There's relatively large volume, so it's gonna require a large amount of drug and diluent. This is very difficult if you have new compounds that are synthesized in small amounts. And rapid changes in drug concentration is not possible, so we can't model short half-lives. The mouse thigh infection model consists of a standardized infection on a mouse thigh. And then we can dose the mouse with the antibiotic and look at the effects over time. However, there are many problems with this animal model, even though it's widely used. The PKPD of the particular antibiotic may not mimic human dosing profiles. Can't do multiple samples over time. Each mouse will represent just one time point. It's hard to do large numbers of bacteria to reveal resistance without killing the mouse. Many infections cannot be modeled in the mouse. As I said, one mouse is required for each time point. The hollow fiber infection model is based on the principle that each one of these little fibers is like a little filter. They get sealed in the ends in this medical grade polyurethane so that when we place bacteria in the area outside the fiber or the extra capillary space, bacteria cannot cross the fiber. So they are contained and retained inside the ECS where they can then be treated to various concentrations of drug as it passes through the fiber. This is a schematic of the hollow fiber infection model. We have the central reservoir which is recirculating through the cartridge. We have a diluent reservoir and our elimination wet reservoir or waste. 
So it's based on the principle that concentration of drug in the central reservoir equals concentration of drug in the extra capillary space where the bacteria are being contained. Then we can add and remove drug from the central reservoir to mimic precisely human pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. The five port reservoir cap is really the heart of the hollow fiber infection model. We have our circulating loop that goes to the cartridge and back. We have our diluent in port and we can also add drug through the dosing port so we can model different routes of administration. The diluent out tube is quite important because we can slide it up and down inside the cap and set it to the level that we wish the central reservoir volume to remain constant at. It's quite important for the central reservoir to remain constant in volume. So if we have the diluent outflow slightly faster than the diluent in, we'll maintain the central reservoir at a constant volume. The importance of this then is our vent filter. We have to have a central vent so that we don't have any negative pressure that builds up inside the central reservoir. The smaller the central reservoir volume is, the less diluent you require, the less drug you need to do your dosing. There are many advantages to the hollow fiber infection model. It is a closed biosafe system, so we can work with pathogenic organisms such as botulism, plague, etc. A big application for the hollow fiber infection model is working with tuberculosis. We do multiple samples over time. We can do large numbers of organisms. So the more organisms we have, the better the chances are of revealing resistance mechanisms. We can precisely simulate human pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. We can look at total kill. This is very easy to do. Simply remove the antibiotic and see if anything grows back. It's a single-use, disposable, consistent, reproducible system. We can easily do two drug models and even greater number of drugs to evaluate their ability to synergistically kill bacteria. We can model both the dosing curve and the elimination curve to look at the most effective ways of administering a drug. And we can look at bacteria in different growth phases and in combination with mammalian cells. Antiviral PKPD is also possible with this system. With any new compound, it's important to evaluate its compatibility with the particular fiber type that you have selected. Fiber Cell Systems maintains a database of different organisms, antibiotics, and cartridge types to work with. A hollow fiber cartridge contains a large amount of surface area. Our C2011 cartridge, which is the standard cartridge that we work with, has 4,000 square centimeters of surface area and a volume of just 20 mils. So we have very rapid exchange of drugs and nutrients across the fiber. This diagram just shows the rapid equilibration of drug within the extra capillary space of our C2011 cartridge. Here we just have an example of multiple hollow fiber infection model cartridges set up within large incubators. We have our diluent in large reservoirs up here, our peristaltic pumps. We typically use two small peristaltic pumps to precisely control both the diluent in and diluent out flow rates. As I said, we want the diluent out to be slightly faster than the diluent in. We can run the tubes through the doors. It's not necessary really to cut the gaskets. Depending on the size of the tubing, of course, the smaller the tubing, the faster the drugs can be manipulated. Here we can see the syringe, syringe pumps for dosing. The system is also small enough that it will fit easily into an anaerobic chamber so that we can evaluate drugs against anaerobic bacteria as well. It can be easy to manipulate the system if we have dedicated carts for each of the components. Here we have a separate cart for the diluent and waste, another cart for the peristaltic pumps, and then the hollow fiber infection model system itself is inside this light tight incubator for drugs that are light sensitive. The hollow fiber infection model is particularly adept at evaluating two drug combination therapies. In this case, we have a separate dosing port for drug A, which has the shorter half-life. So we simply need to add drug B at a controlled rate to the diluent to model its longer half-life. Although this looks like a complex protocol, 
you're basically demonstrating that with one dose a day, the bacteria can regrow. If we do smaller doses over a shorter period of time, we can totally suppress the infection. In the case of antiviral agents, we can see that the dosing required to control the viral infection is actually going to be toxic. So it's not a good idea to be using this type of dosing in a human patient. Data from the hollow fiber infection model has been directly translated to the clinic. The best example of this is the development of new treatment protocols for pediatric therapy of tuberculosis. In children, they have a different bacillary burden of tuberculosis. The distribution of the bacteria is different. It's not just contained in the lungs. Drug metabolism and distribution in children is different. There is higher toxicity at higher dosing for children. The typical adult regimen and treatment for children with tuberculosis is dosing for 18 months and more than 25% of the children exposed to this develop a hearing loss. Using the hollow fiber infection model, drug dosing profiles that resulted both in synergistic responses as well as antagonistic responses were developed. This allowed researchers then to optimize dosing profile to keep the two drug combination and its synergistic activity levels for longer periods of time, resulting in better eradication of tuberculosis in children. In terms of the regulatory position, the European Medicines Agency has already endorsed the hollow fiber infection model as a validated protocol for submitting data for drug evaluation. FDA is currently evaluating the system uh, and working directly with fiber cell systems. The cartridges themselves are manufactured under ISO 14644 Class 8, very consistent uh, controlled manufacturing protocol for consistency and reliability. The hollow fiber infection model is a complementary and additional tool for drug development and should be implemented at the earliest stages. It can give you optimal dose selection and route of administration. Optimal dosing schedule and dosing amounts it can define possible combination therapies. Two drug and even three drug models have been used. We can define dosing profiles that result in bacterial resistance. We can define total kill. We can look at post-approval drug regimen optimization. We can support trial design for phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four clinical trials. Phase four would be expanding the label of a particular antibiotic for new organisms. Emerging antibiotic resistance is a worldwide threat. New viral infections present significant challenges. In the late 1960s, the director of the NIH said, welcome to the post-antibiotic age. We have conquered bacterial disease. He was a little premature. Just recently, the current director of the NIH said, welcome to the post-antibiotic age, when perhaps antibiotics are no longer effective. The lack of new antibiotics means that dosing optimization and combination therapies are the primary tools we have to fight bacterial infections. There's a renewed need for antiviral development as well. The hollow fiber infection model can precisely mimic human pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics to speed and optimize antibacterial and antiviral drug development. Thank you for your time. For more information, please be sure to visit our website at www.fibercellsystems.com.